Hello and welcome to the Snickerdoodle Knits YouTube channel. I am Jessica, the knitting designer and coach behind Snickerdoodle Knits. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to work smocking or create a smocking stitch. Um, smocking is when we wrap yarn around a series of stitches. So the smocking stitch includes the stitches that we work and then we wrap the yarn around it. So this is the intertwined shawl. This is what I'm recording this tutorial for. Um, and this is the smocking stitch. So this here includes five stitches and that is the smocking. So that is the how I'm going to be demonstrating it. It can include different variety of number of stitches and the way the stitches are worked and so on. But um, of course, pay attention to your, your pattern for that. So you will need a cable needle or a stitch holder of some sort for your stitches when you're wrapping the yarn around them. I actually just used, I had another needle tip um, because I had changed sizes for the project and I just used the needle for mine while I was working the project. But, so we are going to work in pattern. So that's just a size stitch. I will go ahead and work smocking starting now and work in pattern five stitches. So on a right side row, this is speaking specifically for the intertwined shawl, on a right side row, that will include knit one, purl three, knit one, and then we wrap the yarns. Um, on a wrong side row, that would be a purl one, knit three, purl one, and then wrap the yarns. I'll demonstrate that as well. So this is a right side row. I'm going to knit one, purl three, and this, this is all part of the smocking stitch. All five stitches are counted as part of that. Um, so when it says to work the smocking, that includes working all five of those stitches. All right, then we want to transfer those five stitches to a cable needle or a stitch holder or whatever you're using to hold the yarn. And then just hold it to the back of the fabric here. And we are just going to wrap the yarn around the base of those stitches. So let's see if I can do this. I'm, I'm working by looking at the camera, which is a little trickier. All right. So we wrap it around the stitches twice. You could create a smocking with three wraps and so on and so forth, but um, that is how we're working with these, the smocking. Um, and you want to end with the yarn in the back of your fabric. Now we can go ahead and slide those five stitches pearlwise. We don't want to twist those stitches back to the right needle. And then here we continue on. But first, you get to decide how tight you want these stitches. Of course, the tighter you make them, the more it will look like there is a hole on each side. But of course, the looser you make them, the less obvious it will be that you are, are really kind of bringing those stitches together. Um, so let me see if I can find here. This here, that was kind of a pretty tight one. Um, and some of these, like up here, are more loose. Um, really, just kind of decide what you want yours to look like. These are definitely tight here. Um, so you can kind of see that it kind of looks more like a hole in the edge, just because there's not the fabric right there because I've squeezed it together. Um, Really decide what you want yours to look like and aim for that tension. So here, I'll just call that good. Um, I also find it helpful. So we'll go ahead and work three pearl stitches here. Um, but if you want to adjust this tension, sometimes it's helpful if you want to tighten it to kind of pull on that stitch. Or if you want to loosen it, pull it the other way. And then just kind of pull it there. Yeah, 
so so that makes it a little bit easier to really get the tension just right okay i'll finish purling these three and then this is the start of another smocking so i'm going to knit one purl three knit one we're going to transfer those five stitches we just worked to a cable needle or a stitch holder or whatever you want to use to hold the stitches the main thing is just that you are able to get around the base of those stitches so then we will wrap the yarn around the base <laughs> there we go two times ending with the yarn in back and slide these five stitches slip them purl ways back to the right needle and then you can kind of adjust your tension here if you want to and we will purl three and of course you can adjust your tension here if you want to and then i will just finish this row in pattern and then that's what our smocking looks like. Um, and I will go ahead and work a few rows so that you can see how we work the smocking on the wrong side as well. I guess as I'm working back across this just after the smocking, I will point out that it's a little bit difficult to read the stitches here. Um, so it, it does help just to remember that this is a repeat of purl one, knit three, purl one, etc. Um, but that is, it is a little bit harder to read your getting there. So this, when we're working the wrong side row just after smocking, it's purl one, knit three, purl one. And now we can see our stitches clearly again. So, um, just a quick little tip there. All right, now I have worked a few more rows and I will demonstrate how to do the smocking on the wrong side. So, um, also, in case you haven't noticed yet, the smockings are um, alternate between columns. So since it was in these columns last time, you will be in these columns this time. So here I will start the smocking with this stitch. I'll work five stitches in pattern, which is a purl one, knit three, purl one. And then I will transfer the five stitches. So it's slipping purl ways um, so that we don't twist those stitches to, oops, I'm catching a thread there, to a cable needle or stitch holder of some sort, whatever that looks like for you. Slipping them off the right needle. And then we are going to wrap the yarn around the base of those stitches twice, ending with the yarn in back. And then slip those five stitches purlwise back to the right needle. And you can adjust the tension of your wraps and then be knitting a few stitches. And then I start my smocking here again. So purl one, knit three, Purl one, transfer five stitches to the cable needle, or stitch holder, or whatever you're using. Wrap the yarn around the base of the stitches twice, and transfer those five stitches back over to the right needle 
and then continue to work in pattern. And that is how you work the smacking stitches on the wrong side. So it's the same technique, we're just using different stitches when we're working in pattern. And you can see that it does look a little bit different from the right side. Here you can see I didn't really pay attention to my tensioning. This one got a little bit tighter, this one's a little looser. Um, but you can see when it's worked on a right side, you can kind of tell how this loop, this, yeah, this loop, I guess, goes into this next stitch where you really can't see it from the wrong side, from when you worked it on the wrong side. And that is because you can see it in the back instead. So I hope you found this video helpful, informative, and easy to follow. If you need a little bit more help, go ahead and replay this video. You can slow it down if you find that helpful. And then leave your questions in the comments. I'm help, happy to help you however I can. Um, and if you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the Snooker Doodle Knits channel. I have knitting video tutorials just like this for each of the techniques that I use in my patterns. And I have design overview videos that really talk all about a pattern so you know exactly what you're getting into before you ever even purchase it. So I look forward to seeing you around and happy knitting.